Good evening to you, everybody. Welcome in for another Tuesday edition of the Barking Brown Show. I'm Jacob. That's Nick. Down below, Mr. Casey Kinnaman. We're brought to you, as always, by our friends over at Homage Apparel. Uh, I'm wearing the Victory Monday because we got yeah. we got passes being thrown. Um, we've got some stuff to talk about. Zipgate is back. Oh, what? Zip season. What's Zipgate that? is back. There's a possible rule change, sort of, kind of. And we're going to talk about the Bengals and the Ravens and the Steelers, some of the stuff they've done in the offseason. We're going to rank some position players, some starting quarterbacks, some backup quarterbacks, top eight wide receivers, you know, things like that. We're going to get into all of that. Gentlemen, how are we doing this evening? I'll tell you what, from the time that we got on pre-show to now, somebody new subscribed to the YouTube. And I just want to say I love you because we've had a lot of nice growth there on YouTube. Lots of people watching, lots of lots of people coming back. So thank you to all of you for helping the three of us to chase dreams. So what is that? that, that is that 254? 245. 245? Oh, listen, five. We are five subs on the YouTube channel from our next giveaway. Oh, and yeah. I heard as we get closer to a thousand. You see that? You see that? You see it? You see that? That might be up for grabs. That's a signed Nick Chubb helmet. It might be up for grabs. Dude, I'm, I'm trying to win. It might be. I'm trying. I'm trying to win. If you want to join the show live, uh, we're on Twitch and Twitter, Tuesdays at 8, Fridays at 8. Um, otherwise, check us out on YouTube. Subscribe to the YouTube. Tell your friends. Tell everybody. Get everybody in here. Let's have a grand old time. Gentlemen, Deshaun Watson was throwing the football today. Um, he was out. Uh it was, <laughs> I kind of think this is kind of fun. I wonder how deliberate this is. It's got to be. But so uh, voluntary mini camp starts today. Uh, they had to practice today. They'll practice tomorrow and they'll practice on Thursday. Then they've got some next week. Uh, and then they've got, I think, the beginning of June. And then there's mandatory camp in the middle of June. So we're going to get some clips from, from here until then. Uh, Watson threw today. Will not throw tomorrow. Tomorrow is the only open practice to the media in this session. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's part of his rehab. And it would make sense that the first day he would throw, take a day off. But it's also kind of funny because we only get a little bit of a glimpse of what happened today because it's all up to the team to release some things. But he did throw the ball today. And what I will say is it didn't look uncomfortable. It looked like he was throwing it. Like mo I saw Jake Burns say this, and I thought it was the way he – it looked like the motion was normal. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. I, I'm not going to – we have the – we make the jokes about zip gate and all this stuff and, and everything like that. But it didn't look like he was, like, cutting it off short or labored it or anything like that. Although he had a pretty sick-ass visor. Did you see that thing? I did, yeah. So you couldn't see his face. I don't know if he was wincing, you know, whatever. I'm not saying that he was, but it looked like a normal motion. Didn't really look hampered. Obviously it was against air. So it, but in terms of, Hey, where are you in rehab? Are you moving along correctly? It looks like it. Yeah. That was my main takeaway too. Just watching his biomechanics. It looked smooth. It didn't look labored. It looked, it looked fluid. You know what I mean? And that's what you want to see. We're talking about a broken bone here, but when your bone's broken, you're not moving your th your shoulder, all those muscles will atrophy. You have to build those back up, and and this is all part of the plan. You know, he's going to throw. He's going to have days off. Prepare for it because that's going to be the whole thing all the way through, even the first half of camp. I promise you, he's going to have days off where he doesn't throw. Oh, yeah. It's all part of the plan. Now, if we get into the season and we're week two, week three, week four, and all of a sudden he has to take multiple days off of rest during week, that's when you need to start right. to pay more attention to – to that. But right now, man, it looks fluid. We couldn't see, you really couldn't see the zip from the side. You want to see the, the impact on the receiver's hands. You couldn't see that from these angles. But like Jake Burns pointed out, like everything looked fluid. Everything looked natural. It didn't look labored. It didn't look like there was a hitch there. Everything looked smooth. So for all indications, it looked like a pretty good day for him. Well, I'll just say that I've listened to a lot of talk about how this is more of a baseball injury. It's not something that's super common for a quarterback. We don't know exactly how he's going to respond to it, that kind of thing. And I get it, right? It's just a couple of clips. Right? The team put it out there that with with an obvious, you know, goal of of showing him and 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 making that look good. I understand that, but at the same time, for people that were saying it might be a longer recovery than uh, we're expecting because it was such a unique injury, that type of thing. To see him throw it all is very encouraging to me. 
Um, that's what I needed to see and was hoping to. And it, it goes it goes uh, a ways to you know kind of calming that nervousness over the, the where the injury rehab is at overall. There's this Jesse Morse. Have you ever seen this guy? He's like a uh, yeah yeah he's sports a bit doctor. so any. Yeah, he's a doctor on Twitter, talks about some things. So um, he put a post out a couple of hours ag- ago um, talking about this situation. And he just said um, that, you know, Watson had a crazy fracture in his shoulder and he's back throwing. It was a right uh, glenoid fracture on 1115. And this was after he had strained his rotator cuff and had missed the three games and he had the high ankle sprain. He underwent surgery on the 21st of November. Um, and it's six months out from surgery, and he doesn't believe he has any restrictions because of the timeline and the way he was throwing. He said it doesn't appear that he has any restrictions. So, and that's what you're looking for because that's all you can get from sh- helmets and short workouts in May. In so, May. Yeah, let's not go too far one way or too far the other way. But if you're just saying, hey, is he on? is he on track? Yeah, he's on track. Okay. There you go. And, and I think that's it. I think that's that's MVP all. season loading. I I just want to say on the other end of that throw, Cedric Tillman looks like a guy to me that should be like a playmaker in the should NFL. Be. He just has that look about him. He, he's like six two or or however tall he is. He's got that that bulk, that mass. I I really hope that that we see like there was a lot of excitement about Tillman last year, and I really hope uh, as we enter camp that we see a lot from him. Yeah, he's 6'3", 215. I thought he was 6'3", 215. I mean, that's the uh, that's prototype size right there. Josh says he's yeah. marked safe from Mario. Uh, shoulder looked healthy, foot looked, looked, looked improved. Yeah, yeah. Face mask looked clean. Right. Oh, vi- Dude, I love that visor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nico uh, said, yeah, he looks – Tillman looks the part. So, now, I know we're going to the in. apple cart. You know, right now he's – Firmly wide receiver four, kind of heading into the season. But if yep. it clicks for him, he could overtake more pretty easily because he gives you something different, right? You know that that we don't really have in that room. So I hope it clicks for him. And we saw because he had to play catch up all year last year, not knowing the playbook, and he never not really got to run there. routes. No, we never really. He didn't have to do no. that shit at Tennessee. Uh, no offense, MC. He really didn't have a full route tree. He was uh-huh. running three or four routes and. When you play college football and you go straight to the NFL, there's no off season from your last year in college to your rookie year. It's football, football, football. He's had an off season, and now everyone's starting from base level because you're switching the playbook up. So hopefully he can just stay up with the guys. And and I'm like like Nick said, man, I think I think camp could be huge for him. I'm excited to see if he can grow this year. Okay, so this drops just a little bit ago from Jonathan Jones. Um, and this is a possible, I guess you could call it a rule change. That's what I, I put in the title. It just depends on how you look at it. Um, the NFL NFL to test optical tracking system for line to gain rulings in the preseason with eyes towards 2024 implementation. That's a pretty big deal because a lot of times when they look to stuff like this, they don't look to throw it out there that first day, that yeah. first year. You know what I mean? A lot of right. times you get like, Hey, we're going to try it and then we're going to talk about it and then we're going to vote on it. So, um, and this is Jonathan Jones's article. I'm just going to read a small little excerpt from it. The chain game, the chain may no longer keep us together. I like that start. The NFL is moving toward moving forward this preseason with an optical tracking tracking system for line to gain rulings. Sources tell CBS Sports. Uh, the system has been tried out in a few NFL stadiums this past season, and it will get a full preseason trial this summer. If the trial goes well and everyone's on board, the tracking system will be implemented full time for the 2024 regular season. So, what does that mean? A, it speeds the game up, not a ton. You don't get a ton. We don't get a ton of you know chains being brought out to mark. Mm-hmm. But right there, that's one less stoppage in play that you don't have to worry about. And we don't have to worry about there being chains and them saying first down or it being past the chain and them saying turnover on downs, which always seems to come up in some pivotal moments. I bet they'll still keep the chains on the sidelines, though, and not use them for official markers. 
They just put them up there. Yeah, for visual aids. Yeah. Yeah, but well, but, I mean, I think that that's a good point because I think you see that with wide receivers in some of those situations where they know where the chains is. They they you'll see mm-hmm. them check where is the chains. Am I pat? Did I get the first down? Things like that. Yeah, that'd be really interesting. But um, mm-hmm. this to me, that. do you know why I think this is a big deal? It feels like it's one step towards the sky judge that we need. Oh, you, be, and the only reason I say that is because this feels like the NFL being willing to compromise on changing some of these traditions. You know what I mean? Because that's yeah, yeah. that's their thing. They don't want to. They don't want to change the game or whatever bullshit they try to spew at us. This could be the the step forward towards getting that sky judge. And in the end, taking human error out of situations that don't need human error is a good yeah. yeah, if they need to substitute the word change for innovate. Yeah, that's Just fine. Yeah. Innovate like the that. game, man. The, the technology exists. You know, now we're going to be mad at technology when we don't get a first down. <laughs> well, oh, yeah. no. Listen, I haven't figured out how the Browns are going to get screwed over from this new set of chains but I have watched refs call first downs not and and yeah. not first downs first downs uh, to screw the Browns over both ways. So they'll figure out a way. Oh but, yeah. But but on a serious note, it's it's really neat to see them uh, getting with. I, I believe they use this type of of technology to like see if a ball crossed the like goal line in both mm-hmm. hockey and soccer. So it's kind of cool to see the NFL moving towards that end of, of the between like baseball, which is like way over there and hockey and soccer, which is, you know, pretty progressive. Uh, I'm interested to see. <laughs> Josh the says show. the calls all come from Vegas. They, hey, probably. Right. Yeah, it's probably. I want to, I want to ask you guys about one thing before we get into the serious topics. Did mm-hmm. you see Grant Delpit in number nine? Well, yeah, you yeah. sent it to us. I know. <laughs> well, I, that doesn't mean you read it. Yeah, well, I read it. Okay, so I saw somebody, I think, I don't know who to credit, but somebody said, if you're playing single digits as a safety, you've got to be a dog. Got to be a playmaker. Yeah. You've got to be a playmaker. Sure, I agree. A, a big season coming for Grant Delpit? Well, we, Juan Thornhill rocks one, so I don't, I don't know if True. It, if it's something he transfers, I think Delpo's going to have a big year either way. Um, okay. I think he gambled on himself by changing the nine, you know, because mm-hmm. um, I know yeah, when you have a jersey and you switch numbers, you this have to pay the NFL one. for all the existing jerseys. Really? Yeah, you can't yeah. just. So whatever twenty two was in stock, he had to buy them out in order to change his jersey to nine. So, oh man, he believes in this. Was he? Was that? A, that was his college number, right? Am I crazy? One of his years. I think he was seven one year, his last year, right? I think he was nine his good year and his sophomore year. I thought and then he adopted seven because that's so. When you're a, a DB at LSU, I think seven is like the coveted thing, like Honey Badger. Oh, I okay. can't. He was seven the last year. Okay. Yeah. 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 I think that's, yeah, that's the way I remember. Yeah, that's what, that's what, and his sophomore really, year, he'd have been nine. It's a really cool little nugget of knowledge there, Casey. I had no idea the players had to actually. Well, it makes sense. He got paid by the Browns, well, right? Got the signing bonus. Yeah. And isn't like thirteen the one for defensive lineman or something? Like that's the coveted number that like you have to get voted on. Isn't I don't that, know. I mean, I know every school has their own tradition. I know, like at Michigan, wearing one like Roman Wilson was this last year, all the way to Braylon Edwards. You know what I mean? Like that's like that's a coveted jersey to have for that school. It just depends on the tradition. How the hell did you have to say his name? Dude, it wasn't all bad. God, 16 touchdowns. I know. Seven. Come on, man. I know. He was a jet. <laughs> he, like, did. I just remember the, like, things that he supposedly said to man. It was Mangini traded him, wasn't it? Was Mangini the one that traded him? It sounds um, right. And I just remember like the things he like supposedly yeah. said. And then he went out and had like a 75 yard two touchdown performance for the Jets. And like all they could talk about, they just couldn't stop gushing. How did they get this guy for peanuts? And then he just sucked the rest of the year. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I was he, like, he made all the difficult catches and would drop the easy yeah. ones, man. Like mm-hmm. it was like, like routine for him. It only came together one year, but that one year was great. 
Oh, it's funnier. I mean, that was um, there was also a another player that we won't mention his name because you know he's in prison. Um, well, they had two thousand yard receivers that year, uh, and Derek Anderson threw nineteen interceptions. That was just a bizarre era hmm? of Browns. Two thousand eight was weird. Just, I don't. I still don't get it. It still like feels like fake because it was like a blip in the radar. And they got everybody like, you know, Phil Savage was the GM at the time. And Romy, they all got extensions just to get fired the next year <laughs> well, later. Yeah. It was, yeah. It was funny. All right, guys, we're going to shift uh, gears over to talk about the AFC North uh, and some of the changes that have happened. We're going to go mainly over just some of the free agency stuff because the rookie things are still kind of up in the air because you don't necessarily know other than saying, I think all four teams had great drafts and I actually, I love the Browns draft. It may have been the worst in the division That's, that's because nice. that's how the division drafts. Yeah. I know. Like that's just, it doesn't mean that's the least draft. amount of picks too. So they, those other teams had more dart throws. But... When you didn't pick to, you know, fifties. So yeah. it is what it is. So what we're going to do here real quick, I'm going to run through uh, we're going to go team by team. We'll start with the Bengals. I'm going to talk about free agency additions, re-signs, and losses. Um, and then I'll let you guys say some some thoughts on that. And then the big thing we're going to go to, we're going to go to the offensive side of the ball. We're going to rank players, Browns and otherwise. We're going to do top eight quarterbacks, top eight wide receivers, all that sort of thing. Talk about some backups, some death pieces, all that good stuff. So I'm going to start with the Cincinnati Bengals. Um, here the uh, significant signings, the additions that Cincinnati brought in, uh, signed Trent Brown to a one-year deal. They now have like the, and then they get, uh, they get uh, Amarius Mims. They have the largest tackle, like physically yeah. largest tackle room in the NFL. Mm-hmm. It's insane. Uh, they get, they get Geno Stone. Uh, I think that's a sneaky good move. The Mike Gusecki signs the tight end. That's really interesting because he's not what he was in, in, in down in, Miami maybe, but like Joe Burrow, he likes tight ends. He likes yep. tight ends that can go out and get the football and Gasecki can do that. I think it's interesting. They got Zach Moss, the running back that I really, really wanted. And they weren't it's able to eight. they got him some uh Sheldon Rankins, the defensive tackle. I think that's a pretty good signing. And they get Von Bell, uh the safety to come back to Cincinnati after a year outside of uh they released uh safety Nick Scott. They traded Joe Mixon to the Texans. Good for them because they were going to cut Mixon, and then the last minute they got a draft pick for it. So that's that's an Andrew Barry esque move. Yeah. Well, so what you do is you announce yeah. that you're going to do the thing, and then some other teams like, wait a minute, said I happen to bid for you in free agency, or I'll yeah. just snatch you up now. Right. Uh, they got T Higgins on the um, franchise tag. Uh, they retain Jake Browning. Um, we'll talk about Jake Browning in a little bit. Um, the signed elsewhere players that matter. Uh, DJ Reader leaves for Detroit. That one hurts. Um, they go out and get two uh, defense. I don't like McKinley Jackson very much, but they 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 got Chris Jenkins in the draft. I thought that was a nice pick. Uh, Jonah Williams leaves. I think they're okay with that. Um, Irv Smith leaves. So so. And then the big one they lost uh, Awuzie, and and yeah. that's a that's a a cornerstone esque part of their defensive long or um, defense defensive secondary, the cornerback. Uh, so thoughts on additions, subtractions, are they better? Are they worse? Are they in the same spot just from that side of things? Well, you draft a Marius Mims cause you have to play miles Garrett. So you go get your own mutant. And basically that's what they just did. Um, T Higgins still hasn't signed his deal. So he can't, he can't even participate until he, he does that. So we'll see how that goes. That's a game of chicken. Did I anticipate going on until camp? He's not going to be in, in a hurry to do that. Doesn't, you know, so be interesting to see how that plays out. Um, I, I too, just like you fellas, I wanted Zach Moss. I do feel that Deontay Foreman's like just that one, mm-hmm. one tick, you know, one tick yeah. down. Yeah. So, um, I was happy with who they ended up, but I, I, I too wanted Zach Moss. I, the Bengals are weird because I think on paper they became a better football team and 
And obviously that's the goal, but they, but they bolstered the offensive line. They certainly improved the defense, which struggled last year outside of really Trey Hendrickson. Right. But on the other side of that coin, it's like, you've got two guys that have requested a trade, right. In both mm-hmm. Hendrickson and Higgins Higgins is not signing his deal. Hendrickson's there, but I just think that there's a weird, like I've, I've learned to appreciate the impact that that type of stuff has on a locker room. And I just don't think the, uh, like if you're they're, bank, hard to, they're hard to get a finger on, like, right. I don't know. Like if you're Cincy, you should be like, we're getting Joe Burrow back. We made a better yep. team. Like we're expecting to win and, and to be great. And the vibes are good, but it's like, you've got these guys that are, that are holding out and in, in, in these issues um, that are surrounding it. And so I really, I'm not like, I'm not very high on the Bengals overall spoiler alert. And so I know we'll get into to where they all rank and stack up, but I, I was I was pissed when they got Zach Moss. I think they that, that them uh, being able to get a pick for Mixon and replace him with Moss, who's a little bit younger, uh, makes a lot of sense for them. He he was really good um, in relief for Jonathan Taylor last year. I hope I was hoping the Browns would get him, and it's like kind of makes a really nice punch with him and uh, Chase Brown. So they should be they should be exciting offensively, assuming T Higgins is 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 out there for them. They should be exciting offensively. So we'll see. And, and the other thing is like there's all this chatter about. Uh, the Browns and Sean Watson's rehab. Well, I mean, Joe Burrow's also had had a season-ending injury, so we'll see where that goes. First off, I got to address the uh, Burrow becoming a sit. That was fake, photoshopped. He does not yeah. have hair like that. Yeah, that is, yeah, that was, yeah, that, yeah well, yeah, but that was actually Hayden Christensen's hair photoshopped onto him. I saw a bunch of posts today of him throwing at OTAs. Everybody's like, "Look, his hair is normal. Right. Like, it's the same length it's always been." Can I say yeah. something though about the uh, injury to Burrow? It's similar to Watson. Is this is an injury you don't see in quarterbacks? Hmm. This is an injury you see in linemen who yeah. don't need the dexterity of a wrist to do those things, you know. So, yeah, keep an eye yeah, on it. I, and yeah. that's my. I think the Bengals will be exciting, but and he's super talented. Burrow's a very talented quarterback. I don't know if he's built for this shit. Well, now I think that's a big part of this year. I think that's a big part of what, what you look at this year. That's why you dropped um, Marius Mims. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure, for real. A very active team um, in free agency is specifically. We'll go to Pittsburgh, kind of talk about some of their stuff. And we'll get deeper into each of these teams. We'll get some guests on later in the summer and talk. Mm-hmm. We'll get hopefully get Drew Garrison back in here. I'll talk about the Bengals and Alex Kazora potentially. Hopefully we can get him back on again to talk about the the Steelers and Kevin Ostriker talked to us about the uh, Ravens last year. So we'll try to get those guys back on. I think they're both really good. So um, looking at the Steelers additions, um, poaching from the Ravens, they get Patrick Queen. Patrick Queen was really pretty bad until last year. Um, he had had a good rookie year and then he was like, eh, and then he like, it turned on. And if there's ever a place that a linebacker with upside goes and gets better, it's probably Pittsburgh. So yeah. I don't love that. Um, but they of course add Cam Johnson, the punter, uh, Russell Wilson, Dante Jackson, Van Jefferson, the wide receiver. They get Justin Fields. They get Quez Watkins, the wide receiver, Dean Lowry, the defensive end, Kyle Allen, they get Cordell Patterson and Scotty Miller. That's it. Those are interesting to me. But yeah. most of these guys that they brought in, Patrick Queen was a big one, three years, 41 million. You know, that's that's a pretty big one. A lot of role players. Um, and I'm still very, very questioning that wide receiver room because there's not anything that super scares me. Um, players they lost. They lost Allen Robinson. Um, uh, uh, Chooks Okorafor. Uh, he went to uh, the Patriots, Mason Cole, uh, Mitch Trubisky, Keanu Neal, Patrick Peterson. Uh, they traded Deontay Jackson, and, of course, they lost Kenny Pickett. So thoughts on their free agency period. They added a bunch of mid-ass wide receivers. Mm. Yeah. Van Van Jefferson. And Arthur and Smith, we forgot. Yeah. Thanks, Scotty Josh. Miller. Josh. I do think that Cordero Patterson, I think that is interesting. It is. I actually do think that's interesting. Um, I'm still pissed that the Steelers got Justin Fields and that Chicago finally helped him out by yeah. getting him to Pittsburgh, right? They chose like the first time ever to do that dude a solid and get him to a, a team that, that I despise. 
Did the so Bears a, lose a bet to the Steelers? Because they also gave them the 32nd overall pick for Claypool. Chase Claypool. Like, that what remains Bill the, now. They shouldn't be allowed to trade with each other. Something's going on. That's weird, right? Just, that remains the biggest, like, what trade that I have ever seen. I'm like, there's been some trades before, but I'm like, you gave up. What was the equivalent? I, I know everybody's, what was the second round pick? The Dolphins didn't have the, No, it was essentially a first round. It was a 32nd yeah. overall. That's, that's that's high draft pick. That's Keon when, Coleman. Do you guys when remember you when the last 32nd uh, overall pick happened in the second round? What is it? The last time the 32nd pick was technically a second rounder. When's that? Emmanuel Ogba. We had the Patriots when the Patriots lost a draft pick for Deflate Gate. Wow. We drafted Ogba with the 32nd pick, but it was nice. technically it the first was pick in the second round. The first second no round. free agent. Just saying. I know. Defensive end room's wildly crowded. Bro. It is. It is. Dude, I talked about that with Andrew Spade on the OBR last night, man. Like, oh, my God. They might keep 12 defensive linemen. <laughs> I do want to well, say something about Patrick Queen before we move on. Um I gotta be honest, man. I'm not that worried about it. They, they, he was directionless. No. He wasn't. He was venomless until they got Roquan. Once Baltimore got Roquan, it slated him over, and then he was able to follow that dude's lead. And then his physical gifts were able to manifest and and make plays. But like, if he's going to be the leader of that defense, are you talking Patrick Queen? I think you said Patrick Peterson. Oh, sorry. Both those dudes. Same thing. No, sorry, <laughs> Pat, Patrick Queen. Um, I was like, what? Thank Roquan. You. What? This is so the Steelers are too prideful to bottom out and like legitimately be bad. They're just they they won't do it if they can help it, right? So this attempt with Russell Wilson and Justin Fields is the most Steelers way to turn their franchise around without being bad and address the Kenny Pickett miss that they could have. So we'll see how it works out for them. I I, I we didn't talk about them adding Arthur Smith. I think Arthur Smith is a good offensive coordinator, and that sucks because they're probably going to run the ball really effectively with with uh, Warren and Harris. So we'll see how that goes. I I, I just Josh does not agree. Good. I hope so. Good. I, I Every hope, down I, that Warren is on the sideline is a win. Yeah, I agree. I was with Jacob <laughs> for that Brown Steelers game where Warren housed that ball. Um, like right He's, before half, yeah. I was like, get him the hell off the field, and they then they did. They were like, you know, we're just not gonna play our best guy, yeah. our best running back. Feed but Harris by all just, means, feed him. Just overall, like I, I just expect the Steelers to still be winning games despite uh, whatever whatever quarterback they tried out there. They won. They were a playoff team with Kenny Pickett. Yeah. I know they were gifted it by Baltimore, but still, it's just they just do that, and so fine, I accept it. I guess. All right, let's talk a little bit of free agency for the Baltimore Ravens, and we'll do some position rankings amongst the AFC North. Uh, Nothing – Baltimore didn't have a very good free agency, in my opinion. They lost more talent. Now, they had a great draft, and they still have a ton of talent. But they add Derrick Henry, uh, the offensive lineman Josh Jones, Chris Board, uh, the linebacker, and um, Kadar Holman, the the corner. So – Derrick Henry, the Browns have done historically well against Henry, so I guess I'm not mm-hmm. super scared about it, but I don't love it. Like, that's one of those things where it's like, eh, I would rather not. Like, like, like I'm not terrified of, of him, but him there with Lamar Jackson, it's a little bit, like, concerning to the point where I'm like, I don't, I don't, I don't really know. Um, now, they did re-sign uh, Justin Matabuke, and he's one of the best defensive tackles in football, so – that was huge for them to bring him back. Uh, Kyle Van Noy, Malik Harrison, Brent Urban, uh, Arthur Mollette. They brought back Josh Johnson and Ardarius Washington. But on the other side, they lost Jadavian Clowney, who was their most productive pass rusher last year. Uh, they lost Donald Darby. They lost Devin Duvernay, Gus Edwards, Tyler Huntley to the Browns. Um, their long snapper, not, not the – yeah. Rocky Asin, Geno Stone, who went to the, another division rival. Uh, they lost Patrick Queen, John Simpson, and they lost um, all pro uh, right guard Kevin Seidler. So, in terms of their free agency, it was a little rough. I think they lost more than they gained. Uh, they drafted really well, and they're still a really good team. This is the best division in football. Don't get it twisted. But I think their free agency has left you with some questions, especially who's your right tackle? 
I wish and we played them earlier division, in the season. And in this division? Yeah, I wish we played them earlier in the season. Yeah. Because hmm. there's a ton of moving parts up front. I'd like to get a shot at them before they figure that shit out. Yeah, before they start figuring out where. I think the – the I, I wonder who – okay, so Zay Flowers and George Pickens, their respective wide receiver ones. Who has less behind them, the Steelers or the Ravens? Because Steelers just drafted Roman Wilson. Ravens just drafted Tez Walker. Mm-hmm. Ravens extended – uh, Bateman. Rashad Bateman and Steelers signed Van Jefferson. Taking Bateman over Jefferson, Zay Flat. I uh, well, we're taking out the, the the number one. I think it's I think it's the Steelers. I like I like that ra- the Ravens room better because uh, I Tez Walker. I like Tez Roman Wilson was my guy, but but Tez Walker was not that far behind him for me. Yeah. Uh, I know some other people in draft position would potentially disagree with that, but I had him close. Um, and I like Bateman, Bateman more than I like Jefferson. So mm-hmm. they're yeah, not they're less dependent on their wide receivers for success because they run everything through their tight ends. So those are like ancillary pieces. And I like Walker's ability to, to get deep. So. Yeah. And I like, I, I like Isaiah likely a lot too. Mm-hmm. Um, although. You do have some. You have Friar Muth in Washington and in, in uh, Pittsburgh. Yeah, that's true too. I I think the Ravens overall lost a lot of staff, and I'm still pissed that they resigned Matt BK because they listened to a podcast recently that said um, if the Ravens had not taken him three picks later, the Browns were going to. And well, so the rest is history there. But I just I'm curious to see because the, the Ravens paid Derrick Henry like he's going to be a feature. You, you know, the centerpiece of their offense. And, and, and that is a, a significant investment to give a 30-year-old running back. So I'm really curious to see if it pays off and and how they look offensively with him. Because that's that's probably – like if Derrick Henry is really good, the Ravens are going to be dominant on offense. They, they just will be, right, between, between Lamar and him running. But if Derrick Henry is not or looks like most 30-year-old running backs do, maybe they have more cracks in the armor than we think. I missed the dad joke from Mitch. Queen my dishes, please. Love it. I missed that one. Um, yeah. All right. Let's have some fun. Let's rank some positions. Casey, take it away. Well, let's uh, start with the quarterback. as the most important position in all of professional sports, and we're going to rank the top eight quarterbacks in the AFC North. So quarterback number one. Boys, is it going to be Joe Burrow or Lamar Jackson? I knew that we were doing this tonight, and I still hadn't settled. I've been going back and forth in my head. One's a two-time MVP, and I've got to take that guy. I, I just, One guy has won two MVPs. The other is, has seen two of his four seasons end in season ending. Injury. Yeah, true. But if you were if you were starting a team today, would you take Lamar over Burrow? Yes. Okay. I'm taking Joe. Uh, I, he's, he's just a, a – better pure passer to me and i think as both quarterbacks age uh, i would rather have burrow J- just based on, because because the athleticism will fade but but guys can pass way longer and way later you know kirk cousins is still slinging it all over the football field at 35 mm-hmm. um so i'm taking joe but uh, followed by lamar well i guess joe burrow is getting the top spot in this ranking boys so okay. joey b and then Lamar Jackson. Well, I didn't realize Wait, this, like group vote. Will you like, put a note that I vehemently disagree? He vehemently disagrees. Yeah, I'm not doing that. Fuck. <laughs> you dick. <Four laughs> well, that's what's going to be. There's there's three of us here. So, you know, I that's fine. like I've been going back and forth. It's close. They do different things, but Nick made a compelling argument, man. You, you if you can protect Joe Burrow and you keep him upright, I think that team has a higher ceiling just because of the way the team's built and yeah, and man. I don't know if Lamar can get over that hump. I think Burrow could. He almost did already. Like right Burrow, now. Burrow could. Like the top end of Burrow's range of outcomes is like passing for five thousand yards. I don't know. Yeah. I don't think Lamar's ever thrown for four. No, but he's gotten two MVPs. It's hard. True. <laughs> That's my point. That's why it's like I'm looking at the two MVPs and the two season-ending injuries and being like. Uh, what do I do with this? Because I agree, the more talented passer is Joe Burrow. But like, but that being said, Joe Burrow already has more playoff wins than Lamar Jackson. That's true too. No, but I'm not in one run. 
Okay. Ravens, the Ravens also fumbled, completely fumbled against the Chiefs. Whereas, well, I guess the Bengals kind of have a, they have beaten them, Mm -hmm. right? Like this was supposed to be Baltimore's year. Everyone was talking about how Baltimore uh, was the best team in the AFC and they got the one seed. They they had the home field advantage. Kansas City's as down as they've been and they go to their house and they get beat. So you guys in consensus that Watson is the QB three in the division? I, yeah, I, I do just want to say that wins are not QB stats, but uh, okay, go ahead. fine. True. So back to the matter at hand, Watson QB three. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not putting fields or, or Wilson, especially not Wilson. Well, I think the real question is, this is the legitimate question. Is Jameis Winston better than Russell Wilson? No. Is he? Who would you I'm rather Wilson. have? I bet you Jameis would have been better in Sean Payton's offense. Because Russell Wilson was not Here's great. one thing. Here's one thing that I think the way everything played out became very, very painfully obvious that Sean Payton hated Russell Wilson. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. like so I'm not saying he went out there and threw games, but I'm sure he mm-hmm. wasn't exactly as friendly as – you potentially wanted him to be because he didn't like the dude. And maybe that was because of his play. I don't know. I would still put him above James. Okay. But if you guys disagree, I'm not going to fight it. I won't fight it. Like I fought the other thing. I, I, I don't think I would fight it like that. No. Such a weird pairing because Russell Wilson's all like good vibes and kumbaya and Sean Payton's like, fuck you and fuck you. again. <laughs> He's like, run my offense. Or I'll go draft a rookie. He will do exactly what I want him to do. Because that's all he can do. Okay. So we're gonna go. We're gonna go Russell here at four. Does okay. Jameis get the nod over Justin Fields at five, or at four, or at five? Yeah. Sorry, math. Math's not mathing. No. So we're can't. gonna go. We're gonna go Russ, Justin back to back. Yeah. yeah. No, I was gonna give Jameis over Russ. Justin. Huh? I'll go Jameis over Justin. Eight. Guardians won. That's seven out of eight, by the way. Eight to seven. Series of a very back and forth game. What are you asking me? Nothing. Now I've already got it. So we got Russ at four, Jameis at five, and Fields at six. Yes. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. So seven is going to be Jake Browning, I'm taking the backup from Cincinnati. Is that you guys are? Isn't that crazy? Because like Jake Browning is one of the, in my opinion, one of the best backups in the NFL. The problem is. Three, the two of the other AFC North teams have really good backups mm-hmm. too. Well, just to that effect, who's the backup in Baltimore now, and why would you rather have Tyler Huntley over him? Isn't it Josh Johnson? Would you rather have Tyler Huntley over Josh Johnson? Probably. I think it's true. I would right? have a lot of guys over Josh Johnson. Here's the thing. Here's the thing, Nico. I I understand you're saying I don't think Fields is bad. No, I don't think he's bad, but I think James is better. That's 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 all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. If I was handing the ball to a quarterback right now to win a game in the NFL, I'd rather hand it to Jameis. It doesn't mean long. And I'd much rather hand it to Jameis over Russell. So, but I digress. Okay. So, are we going to say Tyler Huntley is the eighth best quarterback in this? Like, is that who you guys are at? Do the Browns have three of the top eight? (laughs) I'm not being a homer. I'm being real. I'm not sure who who is. Well, even the thing is, up. I don't even know that he's going to be with Cleveland after. That, that doesn't matter. We're talking about here today. This is way too early to do this. That's why we're doing it. I'll, I'll, you're going to make me yeah. write Josh Johnson's yeah. name down? No. Do it. No, I'll take Huntley. It. Ravens have done some winning with Huntley. Okay, moving on to wide receivers. This one, this one will be fun. Every team's got a few here. Okay. So wide receiver one in the AFC North. That's Jamar Chase, right? Yeah. Yeah. Question is, do you guys have a Mari over T? Yes. Because you guys are good people. I already did that. I wrote this up for Browns Wire like two weeks ago. So like I, I have a top Listen, 10. They they uh, okay. They talked all of this about, about T. Higgins being better than Amari. And and I get it. Amari's the number one and T plays next to Jamar Chase, right? So mm-hmm. so I get it. But the, the fact still remains that Amari's led the AFC North in receiving two years in a row. And he's just been Everything you could like, 
I think he's an alpha and he's one of the most underrated wide receiver ones in the NFL. So give me a Mario too. Yeah. Yeah. And I've also seen, and there, there's always this um, thought that, well, Higgins is a one. He's just on the wrong team. I've seen him when Chase is out. I'm not scared. He's a good receiver, but it's not. It's not I don't like think the, he's just a hands down one, no matter where he lands type thing. Like, I don't. I don't know that T. Higgins is like the the separator type wide receiver. He's just like he no. out physicals you and is giant, so he can he's just like win all. Great of those value, players. Mike Evans. Ooh, that's, that's wow. That's not the worst comparison I've ever heard. Okay, so I we're could, down. I to, could, yeah. So we're at four. So is it? Are you taking Pickens over Zay Flowers or vice versa? I think I think Pickens. Pickens just has like such an insane ceiling. There's a he's I think limited in the routes. We're talking slants and go balls and long crossers, like he got us with. Like Zay yeah. can win. Zay wins at all three levels. Yeah, but he's got limitations because of his size that Pickens yeah. just doesn't have. No. Yeah. No, Pickens, is, Pickens is such a strider. So Pickens is four. Let's go, Pickens. Yeah, yeah. And then he's we're too good in open way. space. Like you just you're not going to catch him. He's you may look at him and be like, ah, maybe he's not super fast because of his size. You know, he's 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 bloody fast and athletic and explosive. Like gets the job done. I've okay. seen him do more than enough against the Browns. Who yeah. is wide receiver sixth in this division, boys? Um, okay, so so we've taken so Zay Flowers is below George Pickens. Yes, right? Zay's okay. five. Yeah, so we're on number six. six. Five, we're on this, six. Jacob's pulling up his list. He's pulling up his list. I can see it in his face. Yeah, Jermaine like Burton hasn't remember. done anything yet. Roman Wilson hasn't done anything yet. Rashad Bateman does not move me. So based on Jerry that, Judy? Are we? I mean, do we I think, think I'm at Jerry Judy. Because like, there's some interesting rookies I... on both the Bengals and Steelers. I'm not really, and, and so yeah, that's that's what I had. I had Jerry Judy. Yeah. Okay. I I'm think it has it. to be Judy right now. I'm with it. I was like, what? I thought it was Judy, but I'm like, I'm going to look like a dumbass if I wrote this up just a couple of weeks ago and then I say <laughs> something different. Okay, seven. Are we landing on? Because Boyd's out of the division. He's in Tennessee. Yeah. So I think that's where he would have fell in right around here. So you're looking at like basically Rashad Bateman, Rashad Bateman. Roman Wilson, Jermaine or Elijah Burton. Moore. Elijah Moore. I have Elijah Moore eight. I have Rashad Bateman, Elijah Moore. I don't have arguments with that. Mm. I, you, got any, you got any objections there, Nicholas? I think Bateman's done more mm. in the NFL. So I, I just Elijah Moore. I if just, he could stay, if Bateman could stay healthy, yeah, he's a really good number two in the NFL in my mind. I think it's safe to say that one of these rookies or these second year players. Like Yoshivas in Cincinnati could probably mm -hmm. could take a step up. Tillman well, could take a step board. up. Sure. You know, you, 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 but uh, as of right now, that's where we got. We got it, Bateman and then Moore. It's an insanely, yeah. like, I, I, I did this exercise. Like, I, I've said it this a million times, but like, I think it's it, just on ceiling and talent, it's a really good division at wide receiver. Like, mm -hmm. it's even better at pass rusher, but like, mm -hmm. Why yeah, that'll be a fun this? episode. Mark my words. The Bengals cool. getting Jermaine Burton is going to be a bitch moving forward. I he hate did. that they got him. He slides right in when T leaves, man. Yeah. Just slides and, right And the tandem, on. like losing Boyd and replacing him with a dude with the upside of Burton and bringing him in to, to a place with a, like a stable. I think Yosefus is yeah, I mean, Boyd's replacement. Okay. Interesting. Mm. He's a physical freak, man. That's true, too. We talked. That's what Drew Garrison told us last year, yeah. and uh, he what? said that I think he's taking Tyler Boyd's spot. That's what he told. He's like, "Hey, next year he replaces Tyler Boyd." And I was like, All right. "All right, let's move on to the running back." The question, the elephant in the room: Are we going to on this list? Are we is Nick Chubb healthy, or is Nick Chubb not? I mean, he is until he tell until they tell me he isn't right. Uh, yeah. Yeah, he's number right. one. Then there's not a he's question. Yep. Yeah. Yep. For the exercise, we'll do healthy because we'll do that for any of these guys. That's right. what I just did for Bateman. That's why yeah, I put yeah. Bateman where yeah. I put. Yeah, that's, this is the season, right? It's not just like this. This is okay. Yeah, I agree. Okay. 
So now the question is, where do we pivot? Are we going to just say Derrick Henry's? Well, Josh, two? I don't hate what you're saying here, Josh. I don't hate yeah. saying that. Warren I just is- hope Pittsburgh doesn't realize that shit. I just, I still have to get Derrick Henry was still so good. He's been so good for so long. I have to give him that respect personally. Where, where are you at, Casey? Are you the tiebreaker? Okay with that. Who did you come with, Jacob? I come with Derrick Henry. Jacob's got Jalen Warren. Yeah, yeah I, I, mean, I, I could just, go. I could go either way. Body of work, scheme fit, and if we're just envisioning he's perfectly healthy, I'll, I'll concede. I think it's Derrick Henry right now. Yeah, that's, I think that's fair. I think that's fair. But Warren is definitely three. He scares the shit out of me every time he touches the football. Yeah. I'm like, he's he, he, if him and Keaton Mitchell, man, like. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, so Warren's three. We're we're in agreement there. Yeah, yeah. we'll go Warren three. Yeah, we'll okay. three. So is Zach Moss getting the nod over Najee? Uh, Najee, you got Najee, you got is Ford, Ford Mitchell. Ford, is Ford over Moss? Like I, this I, is I, interesting here because th- these aren't. There's no. There's no dominant answer. I think Najee and Jerome Ford are in a competition to see who has less vision. It, it had to rattle around in my head for a second. I was like, what did you say? And I was like, oh, no disrespect. Shit. I love you, Jerome. But for the oh, Trent Richardson man. Award. Oh, man. All right. So we got Warren at three. Who are we putting it for, boys? I I want to give it to Zach Moss. I want to give it to Keaton Mitchell. It's Keaton. Wow, he ACL last year though, right? Yeah, he's. he's I was just saying, perfectly healthy. Um, he was really good last. I mean, year. He really didn't. I mean, we're talking about a guy who barely. Is he different from Nick Chubb, who has this massive body of work, no. versus Keaton Mitchell, who played like four games, who uh, looked good in four games? But I, I can't be like, that's think, the dude. That I think, I think it is Zach Moss. Okay. I think it's Zach Moss. I would have said I would have been saying that the Browns had the. Uh, one of the best running back rooms in the in the sport again if they had gotten Zach Moss with Nick Chubb. So I still think they do. Zach. I mean, I it's a good running back room. No, there's no doubt. As long as he's healthy, it's a, it's a pretty good room. Even and if even he's if not, he's not look at the rest of the league. You, you can put out Foreman, Ford, and yeah. Hines out there. That stacks up the rest of the league, man. Yeah. Oh yeah. And with Nick Chubb, it blows it out of the water. I think. Okay, where are we at? You know what? We're at I five. Just, we got to decide who gets Ford or Najee. Where does Chase Brown sneak in this? I know that's that's a good question. I, I, I don't know. I don't know if you want to put Chase Brown over him, but if you're just talking Ford versus Najee, I'll take Ford. Ford? I think, he can, I think Ford's more explosive. Ford is very him. indecisive and he can't see shit, but if he if he locks yeah. into it. Yeah. Also, he's a great receiving threat. Yes. So I, I give it. I like that's that's probably the most underrated part of of what Ford brings to the table. I think he had the second most receiving touchdowns for running backs last year. Yeah. So, so you would, what, what you want to do? Ford five, Najee six. Sounds sounds I right think, to me. Yeah, that sounds fair. Yeah, I think that's fine. So then you have Chase Brown. Well, that's it. We only went six in running back. Oh, we only went six. It's okay. not the same kind of depth that these positions are. Yeah. Fuck everybody are. else. Yeah. You know I could, I mean? You could have talked me into like Chase Brown, Keaton Mitchell debate if you had wanted to. Yeah. No. I'm into it. There's That's a lot right. of good running backs in this. I like both of those guys. All right. Let's move on to tight end, gentlemen. Okay. Who's your tight end one in the AFC North? Fight? Are you going to say it, Jacob? Would you rather have Njoku over Mark Andrews? Yes. Wow. That's a tough one. Damn. There is like so much like Njoku. If you haven't watched this week's or I don't know if it's this week, but the, the latest unleashed, he's dropping some weight and emphasizing on speed and getting faster. And he said like his, his like, uh, like mantra for this year is speed kills. Love that. Okay. All right. All right. I'll say this. If, the Browns passing game doesn't hold David and Joku back this year. They'll finish with better stats than Mark Andrews. So I have to give it to David and Joku then. I firmly believe that, that David and Joku would out receive and touchdown Mark Andrews. If 
the Browns passing game is up to par. Because he's just he's a game breaker. He showed it so many times. Yeah, no, His he catch is. ability he is. is second to he's none. Still what twenty seven? I just I just hesitate to think he'll get more opportunities than Andrews will in Baltimore's offense. They Lamar owns Lamar only throws in the middle of the field. Right. He's like anti Russell Wilson. <laughs> he just throws in the middle of the field, yeah. and that, that's the reason their tight ends do uh, the numbers they do. But I'll, I'll roll in Joku one. Andrews is the clear two at that point, right? Yeah. Andrews, uh, very oh, yeah, it's not even close. Would you take likely over Fryermuth? No. So Fryermuth, I, like I think he's, I Muth think he's talented. I think, I, I think likely is. I don't think he can block like Fryermuth. I think he's, he might be a better wide receiver, but I think it, like a better better pass catcher, but I think it balances out and puts Fryermuth ahead of him. Okay, so like, likely he's coming in at four. Is that where we're at here? And you're up to help me out on this. Outside of Gasecki, I don't know another tight end on the Bengals roster. Eric Hall. Yeah, I can't I can't rank a rookie. Rookie, no. I think it would be Gasecki, wouldn't it? Yeah, but other than Gasecki, do they, they have another they drafted, tight end on the they drafted roster? two rookies in the same draft? Is it like McLa- McLa- McLaughlin? Yeah, they got yeah, they got Tanner. You're right. They got Tanner. That's a kid I wanted late. Arizona. Um, no, it's just a Drew Sample. Drew Sample's the other one. Oh. So it's going okay. to be Njoku, Andrews, Friar Muth, likely Kaseki. And then so is six Washington. Mm-hmm. The last one, does Washington make it? I mean, for physically, that kid's got everything. We just, they didn't really utilize it last year. I don't know what to think about Jordan Akins. I, I don't know. I'm not sure. So yeah. caught a ball yeah, I, today. I saw that from James. I did see that. He looks he looks uh pretty uh wet like I like how do I say it? Like he looks he looks big but not like out of shape. It right? Like, yeah, yeah, he's got some mass to him. Uh yeah, yeah. I, I, I would do Washington personally. I think yeah. Okay, we'll boys, see, that we'll concludes that. our rankings of the skill positions in the AFC North. Teddies. Confirm. Okay. So, okay. So, where did the Browns come out? Browns have third best quarterback. Sure. Um, the second and fifth best wide receiver. Uh, second, six, and eighth. Second, six, Two, and eight. Six, and eight. Okay. Mm-hmm. They're the first best tight end. Mm-hmm. And they have. First best, best running back. back. Yeah. And the fifth best running back. Okay. A lot they have three end. of the top eight quarterbacks right now. That's wild. It's it's really interesting how like they're just like we're not going through this stuff again. Like you can mm-hmm. tell on both. They're the going to keep line, like twelve offensive linemen, right? Man. And quarterback, <laughs> they're just like absolutely not. We're we're not doing it. I love that. Love it. James threw a hell of a ball today. I don't know. Yeah, Jordan Mark Thrash. Or to take, oh, it was Akins. Okay. Yeah, it was Akins. I saw Akins catch one. I, didn't, I, didn't, I, only, I only saw one clip of uh, JMO today. Okay, so so out of I love Jameis. Did you see him ch- following and cheering on Scotty Scheffler over the yeah, weekend? Yeah, yeah. Really <laughs> he cool. was like in his entourage, and people were getting clips of him. And Jameis was like, just like, eh. he was like, cheat. I love Jameis. I love okay. Jameis. So in the aggregate. Of offensive skill position players, which team are you taking? You got to take one in their entirety. Oh, no. If Chubb's healthy, this isn't a question. You're taking the Browns. It's not even a question to me. Because if you look at the Bengals, yes, they have the two best receivers that are on the same team. But Yeah, but they don't have a tight end that really scares me at all. Their tight end was fifth. Their running back was fourth. So – that's all they got, you know. If you look at the the Browns have nine of these twenty eight players. That's, That's more than the average share. Obviously. The average would be seven. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If it was even, it would be seven, seven, and seven. Yeah, yep. but it's not, baby. It's what we should do this exercise. Seven, 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 I find yeah. it, I find it difficult not to take the Browns. I just, yeah, no, I'm not trying. To, I'm being honest, man. Do you want to know what the problem is? What's that? I always lean towards the best quarterback. Yeah. Get it. 
and that's not Cleveland. True, you know? but we're talking about skill positions. We're, we're talking about the best skill positions. Yeah, so but quarterbacks all the, all the heavy lifting for his team. Well, right, but Zay's great, and Andrews, sure. And Andrews is great. I like Keaton Mitchell. I, I think Derrick Henry's still good. Like, I, like I said, I'm not terrified of Derrick Henry, but I don't love that I got to see him twice this year. Mm-hmm. I'm not worried about him against us. I'm worried about him running on the rest of the league. Well, yeah, I'm, worried about a- I'm more worried about the scabbacks. I always worry more about scabbacks and speed than I do power. Power you can tackle. And the way I look at Derrick Henry, man, to for Derrick Henry to be at his utmost effective, they have to feed him. Because he usually does most of his damage in the second half, mostly mm-hmm. fourth quarter. Yeah, when he's been body blowing you all day. Yeah. yeah. But if that means you're taking the ball to Lamar's hands, thank you. Thank you for that. Take it's, the ball to Lamar's hands. When you're playing us, that's what I'd, I would rather have that and okay. take on Henry. But the rest of the league might see this differently. Okay. Any final thoughts? Um. Our next video is Nathaniel <laughs> Watson. Yeah. yeah. Our next our next draft video. Okay. So, and those have been doing really well. Y'all, y- y'all watched a ton of Jamari Thrash review. Thank you, by the way. Because, like I said, the, the YouTube, if you click that subscribe button, if you hit the little the little rating button, whether you, wherever you find our podcasts or, 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 or the subscribe button on Twitch even, we got lots of ways that you can support three guys chasing their dreams. And we appreciate everybody that has taken the time. The most valuable thing you can give to anybody is your time. And those views mean so much, especially on the YouTubes. So thank you. This has been a AFC North ranking, digital stick making, Barking Brown show. Nick, he's Jacob. That's Casey. Go Browns. Hey, you can produce about 40,000 liters of spit in your lifetime.